part 16 of our top down construct series and slowly we're getting there i must say i went over the series uh, yesterday and i can see some great progress taking place and we're going to be working on some more of that depth uh, with regards to the hazards as well as the inventory that we're going to be bringing in based on items that you purchase we're going to show you guys how to work with the mana bar that's all coming in up and coming videos so stay tuned to this channel hit that subscribe if you're new here because we've got some exciting stuff now last week as you guys will know we went ahead and we covered the uh, loot drop with regards to the chests i encourage you to go look at that video as well as we covered the hud subtracting and adding to the hud when picking up the hearts that we all have now just to refresh you guys over onto our main um, or was I main? Oh, sorry, I'll fix uh, event sheet. You'll know that we had this drop items function that we created. Go check it out in our last video. The great thing about functions, and I keep saying it, is that you get to call it elsewhere. Instead of writing this code again, I get to call this drop items code once this function and then it applies to everything that i apply to so to give an example i want for instance enemies to drop a um, loot on death so quite simple yeah you can see it's my enemy uh, death function so all we're going to go and do here just to start this video off we're going to add the drop down of items on enemy death and then must more than likely be working on the spike traps that i've preset already um, on stage one so we'll take a look at that so just to quickly cover the first step really cool as you know from our previous video we have a function i'm going to go ahead and say drop items and it's really simple we're going to create an x and a y to where we need to drop it so that's just going to be enemies as simple as that onto our family and we're going to go dot x and then we're going to go straight onto our uh, enemies y and i'm going to probably offset that slightly maybe by eight pixels just to give it that that feel if you want to call it that so i'm going to just go minus eight you don't need to do that uh, that's just for me and then we're going to go ahead and just enter random of the loot. And in this case, I'm going to say two and maybe plus, plus maybe a random int between, between zero and two, just to, to spice it up a little bit. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and just save that just to show you guys what that might look like. So let's go over to our stage one. We've already got some enemies here. I'm going to go ahead and just click play. So here's our character. And this is the spikes we're going to be working on. So yeah, we're going to see uh, what this looks like. So essentially, if I hit him once, he comes back. I hit him again. Sorry, there we go. And he drops some loot. So that's working well. I still need to work on the kickback there, essentially, on the player itself. And some of the idle animations, we're going to be doing a tidying up video. Uh, but And also just making this a little bit more seamless because you notice that I'm, I'm, here, I'm bouncing on him first. And that's a collision, uh, you could say, distance that's set. That's uh, not exactly set correctly, but we'll, we can fix that um, in our next up and coming uh, video to show you. I just need to set the collisions um, so that they're a lot more smooth. All right, so great, so simple. All I went ahead there uh, I did was basically call an existing function, which was my entire uh, drop items function that we created last week, and I added a simple one-liner essentially, and now on enemy death, I can make use of that utility. So that is why functions, and again, I can't express this enough, is so vital in programming and um, global and inheritance programming, essentially, so that you inherit these, these, these elements throughout your game without having to subsequently recreate, recreate the same code over and over, making the game top heavy. Okay, very critical, guys. I can't express that enough. Now, over onto our stage, I'm gonna just um, step you through a few things. I, I used to do th this a lot differently, and so you're looking at different tutorials, you know, I'm also looking for better ways to, to improve um, my games as well. There is a great way of doing this, the, the spike traps. Now, currently you'll see here I've got four spike traps set. Now, I've set a standard um, sprite. I'm going to double check this, uh, double click this and show you guys I've got the two animations. I've got a default animation, which is just the floor animation. And then I've got this action animation and you'll see I've got just the, the perfect animation with regards to my spikes. Okay, so what we're going to do now is because throughout the game you might have spikes going to a different sequence if i go ahead and set a timer to the spike here itself without prepping what we call like a sprite timer um, this is all going to run in sync and it might look off edge if i can't go this one run at 0.5 this one run at one it's a lot more coding so a great unique trick really essentially is to create a new a new sprite uh, let's do that together so we're going to go ahead here and say new sprite i'm going to click that here and let's just put the word um where's our paint tool so we know that it is in fact timer. So I'm gonna go the paint tool here. I'm gonna select a color. I'm gonna say bright red so that I know. Okay. Um, and let me show you what this is gonna look like. So we go here and come on. There we go. Just 
take red over there, good old trusty red. And I'm gonna just push a T across here for now. You can make it neater if you want to. I want this to be essentially my timer. Now this is not the greatest looking tea in town, but rest assured it's going to definitely do its thing. Okay, so you get the you get what I'm saying. Right, so there's our T. I'm gonna go ahead and just cramp that essentially, and I'm gonna close that. All right, so I'm gonna just zip this down to a simple 16 by 16. Uh, because that is our pixel size. It doesn't need to matter. This is not something that anyone's going to see. This is initially going to be set to, to invisible, so don't stress. But by having it here, effectively, is going to set. Every time I place a spr uh, sprite trap, I'm going to use specific timers to, to allocate the time between delta and this time of when to sort of trigger those spike traps. All right, so now that I have my timer, I'm going to go ahead and add three instance variables. So I'm going to click on here, I'm going to click on instance variable. Let's go ahead and add a number. And the first number is going to be timer, as you guessed it. So let's go timer, I'm gonna set that to zero. Okay. The next one we're gonna to need to do is in fact also the timer max. So let's go and add um, timer and then we're gonna underscore the max. All right. I'm gonna set that to zero as well. Because now we can set individual groups. Every time I place the timer sprite, I can I can do a different one. And the next one I need to do is add an instance variable. And that is going to be group, okay, different groups, because this is going to be spike group one, spike group two, etc. And that's going to be a string because it's a, obviously a title, a text, theoretically. So obviously those need to be different. Okay. So now that I've got my timer, which is this time of year, I'm going to go ahead and set that group, and I'm going to call that. Let's call it spikes. Spikes. Okay. So we know that that's the first group. Then I'm going to set the max timer to 1.5, and I'm going to leave that to zero. Right. Fantastic. Next thing we need to do is go over to our spike itself. Um, you guys can obviously just create your own one and whatever you need to do. And I need to add one or two things. I can obviously have all the spikes, it's best to put this in a family. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that so that we have it correctly. So yeah, you'll see we've got our enemy families, but I'm gonna go ahead and add another family. I'm gonna pull in my spikes because this is gonna be our hazards moving forward. You know, we might have a number of things, flames, something throughout the, throughout the game. And we want to essentially you know, make sure that that we don't just, you know, work with them individually, that we work with the, the, the families as a whole. So I've got my first family, so I'm gonna go hazards um, with regards to this one. So hazards, oh, it's hazards. That's not the one I'm looking for, is it guys? So let's go hazards, there we go. And now we've got that. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add one instance variable on there, and that's going to be my strength variable. Okay, this is the vital. Why do we have a strength variable? Because that's what we wanna subtract uh, theoretically from our from our um, from our player from the health so if the player is obviously uh, on collision with this let's go and subtract the strength so I'm gonna click that to okay and I'll click done all right so I've got my spikes here which is fantastic and obviously I can set the individual so I've highlighted them all and I can go and set the spikes to let's say three so if you touch these spikes um, when I subtract from the health essentially you're gonna lose three health Right, great, so let's go over to our effects. Now I'm gonna place this into my effects only because I think it's best suited. We, we handle a lot of the things outside. Our main is essentially for critical things that we're gonna see globally throughout the stage. But effects would be the flies, the drop items, things that we know is going to be uh, not only global, but effectively um, depth to our game as a whole. All right, so let's go and add our new group as we always do to make sure that things are nice and tidy. And we're gonna call that spike. Uh, spike, and we're gonna call that trap. Let's go ahead and click OK. So this is going to be all our logic moving forward. Now, the first thing we need to do is add an event. So we're going to go add a event. Let's just do that right here. Add an event, and we're going to go the timer that we created, right? Now, I should have renamed this, so let's go and just do that quickly. But okay, let me just add this. Let me just do that correctly so that everything is done the way we've been teaching it here. So yeah, we're going to call this timer, OK? So now we've got our timer. Great. And let's go back over to our... Um, fix and now we can go system and we can go timer and we can basically go and check uh, choose between the instance variables so we're going to go compare an instance variable right and we're going to go timer which is that number is less than less than and then we're going to go self self and we're going to go dot timer and we should just pop up so we've got self dot timer and we should click done. 
Right, so there is our timer. And now we can add a condition to that. And then we're gonna basically set that to delta. So we're gonna go timer again. Where is it? Timer, and we're gonna say add. We're gonna say add to. And we're gonna say to, obviously it's timer. All right, timer, we're gonna add dt. Done, so timer add to DT. Right, the next condition we need to do is timer again. We need to now check that it is greater or equal, so we're gonna go compare instance variable. We're gonna to go to um, is greater, so we're gonna go timer again, and we're gonna go is greater or equal to self, self dot timer max, and we can perform that, click okay. Okay, so time is greater, then we need to set this timer. This timer and set it to zero. Now this all plays their effect because this is the time in which the spikes are going to obviously trigger itself. So just bear with me. So we go to set, where is our instance variable, set value, and we're gonna go timer, and we're gonna set that to zero. Okay, fantastic. Now we can add ourselves a sub-event. Let's add a sub-event. And here we're going to say spikes. Now I can do, this is only going to apply to spikes, so we're not going to use the hazard as a, as a, as a condition. Uh, we're going to use our spikes. So here we're going to go spikes, and we're going to need to do a number of things. The first thing we're going to need to do is compare an instance variable with regards to um, the timer. So we're going to go, um, we're going to go group, so we're going to compare. Let's go compare an instance variable, and yeah, we're gonna go to, um, and it's only showing me the hazards for some obscure reason, which is strange. So we've got our instance variable, but why do we not have, okay, you know what we need to do? We actually need to compare it with that. So we might have to add, let's go back to our spike quickly. And where we've got our string, we need to add some instance variables here as well. So let's go ahead and add a number of instance variables. So the first one we're going to need to add is the group as well. So we can compare the group. So let's do that. So let's go group. And that we'll call as a string as well. Because theoretically, I want to obviously compare it with this group. So if it's part of group spike one or spike two, then it obviously runs this timer. Um, and we're going to add one more. Let's call it action underscore timer so we know which action to trigger action underscore timer we're going to set that as a number and then we're going to go last one is going to be a boolean which is going to be action executed let's do that executed and we're going to set that as a boolean okay so either that's going to be true or false fantastic right great so next thing we need to do is obviously go and set the sub event now so we're gonna go as sub event. Now we can compare that. So I'm gonna click on spike here. I'm gonna say compare that instance variable. I'm gonna go the group string. And I wanna compare it obviously with the um, with the timer string. So yeah, we're just gonna go is equal to, and we're gonna go timer, that timer of ours, the dot group. So we're first confirming that this is in fact the group that we're working with, okay? Because that's an instance variable that exists on this timer sprite. So I'm gonna say comparing that, and then I'm gonna go and set the spike the spike again and I'm gonna set the the um, you could uh, probably set the boolean first set the boolean executed to false okay great then I'm gonna add a new event and I'm gonna say spikes I'm gonna go compare an instance variable compare instance variable and I'm gonna go group Right, is equal to again that timer that um, timer dot group. Okay, then go ahead and perform the following. So yeah, we're going to do a number of things. So currently, as you know, when we walk over something, there's what we call a collision set. They these are, are by default set to active. Okay, so we might by default set that to inactive, but we can leave a check. But we need to ensure that. If this is active, then it will cause what we call a collision. If this is not enabled, um, you won't be able to collide with the enemy. So this is obviously important, uh, you could say utility that we will set based on if the time is triggered on this timer that we set accordingly, go ahead and then set the collisions to true. So there's a few things we need to do here. So on this, we need to obviously 
add a sub event. So let's go and add a sub event first. Add a sub event. And let's go spikes. And then we're gonna go action timer is less or equal to the end timer. So we're gonna go action compare an instance variable. And we're gonna go here, the action timer of the spike is less, uh, less or equal to the timer. All right, timer, timer, timer. I guess it's been called. I think they called the timer. Yep, timer. Okay, would be our first condition. Then go ahead and play the animation, which is my, my you could say my action animation. So if I go into my spike and I double click it, I've got action and default. All right, so make sure those naming conventions are spelled correctly, both with the capital in my case. So I'm gonna go set the um, animation. So I'm gonna go spikes, and I'm gonna go uh, set animation, set animation, and yeah, I'm gonna set obviously the action. Okay, so action. I say play from beginning, and then I'm going to set the collisions to enabled, which is those collisions as you saw in the lecture. Set collision because now we effectively the um, the spike is working. If that makes sense, it's now active because it's now less or equal to the timer that was set. So if it's less, it means I'm triggering it because I've set it to zero to start with. Obviously, as the timer runs from delta, it will then trigger this event. So and then set the the action spike boolean. So I'm going to go spike here again. I want to say set boolean, and I'm going to set that to true. So that's going to be true. So you have disabled it, obviously, when the, the group timer is the equivalent to the spike timer. Set it to false means it's down, but as the timer runs, go and activate. Um, also, I might just add a sub event here just to ensure that there's no add another uh, condition. And I'm just going to make sure that that is, in fact, true. So I'm going to go spike, and I'm going to go um, set check compare the boolean. I'm going to say that action executed. And I'm going to invert that because obviously this needs to be false to be able to trigger this, if that makes sense. And then the last thing we need to do is ensure that the, um, the other condition, uh, sub event, uh, would need to be the animation finishes, really. So we go spike, and we go on animation finished. Uh, where is animation? On animation finished. And this one's going to be the action animation because we're playing it in this, the function above, action. I'm then going to go and um, set the, the animation to default. So let's go there, uh, set animation to default with a capital uh, default. And then the last thing is set the collisions back to um, back to false. So spike and then set the collisions back to false. Right, collisions enabled, set disabled. Okay, so yeah, you can see I'm checking the groups. I'm then using the timer based on the certain groups because I'm going to trigger it now. I'm going to set those values accordingly. If it's equal to that, go ahead and then set the um, the timer to active. Play the animation. Set the collision that if I can touch it, I end up getting hurt. And then um, go and deactivate theoretically when the timer has uh, has stopped. Okay, so that is our code. I just want to make sure that is correct. Yes, it is, which is great. So now on the action timer, it's quite simple. We're going to basically go on and um, set the stage so yeah we can go on these first two let's go and set this to um sorry let's set this one to group which is do none of these groups so let's set this one to spike spike and let's do the same with this one let's put that to spike so why these instance variables are so important because now we can theoretically set each one accordingly. Um, this one I'm also gonna just call spike because it's stage one. So let's call it spike, spike one or whatever you wanna call it. These are so close together and I'm gonna call that spike. And then I'm gonna go ahead and set the timer on this one to one, the action timer, wait one second, and then this one as well, wait one. And this one I'll keep to zero. Okay, let's go ahead and play that. This should now work. All right, so there we can see the spikes are now going in different sequence. They're not at the same time unified. So if I want to lay down a couple of, you could say, spike traps, I can have them wait and then move across, you know, theoretically without having to stress. All right, so obviously this now needs to be added to our on collision event so that when this player touches that, it needs to knock him back. So let's go ahead and do that quickly. Um, very important, guys, it's very important to remember that the spikes that we've called this year and the timer needs to be spelled correctly for each group. If you're gonna go ahead and have a different group of spikes elsewhere, 
make sure that you call it group two, then you can program them accordingly. This is why we're using the timer. I'm gonna go ahead and set that to obviously um, uh, invisible because no one needs to see that. That's just for programming purposes. So this should just be empty uh, moving forward. But now we wanna ensure that this player gets hurt. So let's go ahead and just do that last piece. So we're gonna go up to our player and um, Let's have a look. So here you can see player hurt. We've got on collision with the player, go ahead and run the hurt function. Really simple. Note that on damage, we pass the enemy base damage. This is why that strength variable is critical. So if I go back to stage one, and remember on the spike itself, we created the strength. That is the value we're gonna be passing through the functions. Again, a one-liner to ensure that it is. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just add a new event right under player hurt. We're gonna go player on collision. We're gonna go on collision with an object. And you guessed it, it's going to be hazards because that's what we need moving forward. And that will obviously be enemy bases. This is our hazards. And we just basically go ahead and paste it in there. But in this case, we need to change it to the hazards. And then we need to change it to strength. Okay, that should just pop up. Let's go to dot strength, not coming up. There we go, dot strength. Okay, now guys should basically flash, knock himself back, and uh, it should work perfectly. So click on stage one. And uh, there he knocks back, as you saw, knocks back. But if I go, I can go over it when it's not on. You see that? There, sorry. Okay, now he's dead. Let me just run that again. We still need to work on that. This collision set is obviously just too far because I'm over there and it triggered itself. Okay, so there I can run through perfectly and I can't run, I can run through, but if it's up, then I get knocked back. So if it's up, as you can see, I'll get knocked back. Right, so theoretically working beautifully, the collision is on to off. So let's just recap on our code over here. And to show you guys, if we go over to our effects thing, we again, once the group time is equal to that timer in terms of, of set, we're checking that to make sure the, uh, the executed is false. We go ahead and play the animation, which you see, we set the collision to true. This has to be true, otherwise you're not gonna be able to take damage. Then we then go and set this action to executed, which runs this entire function over, and obviously you get the logist of it. On the action, the, the animation finished, obviously we set the collision to disabled and then it just re-triggers itself. Okay, so this is a very tidy way of doing it. Now you can do this without the timer, you don't necessarily need it, but it does become a problem I've seen when you've got multiple spike traps and you're trying to set them up to run in different sequences. Then it's difficult to trigger them accordingly like you see here with the different values. Now let's say for instance, I wanted to get them all to trigger in the same sequence here. I can go and set this one to zero and then I set this one to zero as well just to give you guys an indication why the time is so critical. And if I run it now, you'll see that come up at the same time. Now it's nice to do creative things. You know, you want the one to come up, wait, and let the player get there and let the next one come up. You, you get the idea, you can be creative in your stage. But that's for us today, guys. I'm going to obviously, in our next video, we're gonna be working with the um, itineraries, which is vital. We're gonna be working with some more enemies and then I'm gonna be working with, I guess, different players. Essentially a menu screen where you can select an archer and then we will spawn an archer, maybe work on some archers in terms of its bone arrows, etc. And then I'm going to start working on some fine improvements, collisions, the idols, and ensuring that everything is very tight moving forward. So that, and also the breakables, and we've created the switches, and how we're going to work with those switches in, in different stages, etc. That we have all the base components and elements, that you guys eventually have all the tools to go ahead and make one kick ass game. But as always guys, if you're new to this channel, give us a subscribe and a like, we always appreciate the love. 